has now begun. So hello fellow grand streamers. Thank you for joining me today for this webinar on our GWN cloud management solution. My name is Anita and I am the marketing specialist for the APAC region. To, today for the first time joining me is our technical support engineer Hakimi from our support office in Malaysia. He will be doing a live demo of the GWN cloud interface towards the end of the presentation. And like always, Feel free to type in the chat box anytime if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello. Uh, we will also have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, and you know how it goes. So let's begin. Um, but first, let's do a brief overview of our GrandStream uh, GWN Access Point series and talk about how each one differentiates from each other. So over the past couple of months, I've done a lot of presentations on our net networking portfolio. And I know that there are some uh, loyal webinar attendees here that joins all our APAC training. So here's a little um, quiz for those of you. If you could take a second to fill out the following answers to where the blanks are for A, B, and C. I'll give you guys a minute to type in your answers in the chat section. And it's okay if you don't know the answer. I will be going. I will be doing a brief overview of the products anyway. Um, just want to see where you guys are at. Thank you, Ashir and uh, Summit, for putting in your answers. Any more? <laughs> Gift for the first one to answer. Okay, another answer we have there. Anyone else? An answer before I move on? Give it another second. All right. Um, Let's see. So judging by the answers, most of you got it right. Um, one of the first two models that we came out with is a GWN 7610, which gives you the ability to support up to 250 clients, which was the answer to part A, with 175 meter coverage range and 
an embedded controller, which you can see the embedded controller bullet points mentioned on all our models here. It's ideal for office buildings, multiple floor locations, branch offices, basically for any business trying to expand their Wi-Fi coverage. And next, we came out with the 7600 about a little over a year ago. In comparison with the 7610, the, G the GWN 7600 gives you support for an additional up to 200 clients. Being able to support up to 450 plus Wi-Fi clients, it has all the same great enterprise features as the GWN 7610, but with um, but designed with the small to medium businesses in mind. It is a mid-tier 802.11 AC Wave 2 Wi-Fi access point that offers dual band 2x2 multi-user MIMO with beamforming technology and a sophisticated antenna design for a maximum network throughput of 1.27 gigabits per second. And that's our answer for part B. So if you're looking for a high end speed and speed is what is uh, most important to you, you would want to go with our GWN 7610. But if you're more interested in supporting a um, wider range of clients for like say in a restaurant or public areas or businesses that wants to offer Wi-Fi for more clients um, and not really concerned about offering the utmost uh, optimized speed, uh, then in that case the GWN 7600 is great for you. Then just a couple of months ago we came out with the GWN 7600 LR the thing that sets this apart from the other two GWNs uh, on the left is its special waterproof and heat resistant casing, making this great for outdoor usage, whether you need long range Wi-Fi outside, a uh, tropical or freezing climate. Uh, this would be perfect for hotels who might have open pool areas or for car dealerships where you're in more need of an open range. It has a 300 meter coverage uh, capability, which is the last answer for part C. And in case you need more of a refresher or want to learn more about our networking portfolio, including our GWN 7000 router, which I didn't uh, mention in this presentation, check out our YouTube page at Grandstream APAC and subscribe for more upcoming videos. I will be publishing two new videos very soon probably uh, on Monday Pacific Standard Time. And one of them is on our GVC uh, series business conferencing solution and the other is uh, on our GWN cloud. So now that we're up to speed with our networking products, uh, let's dive into our new beta GWN cloud. So what is the GWN Cloud? Well, it is our new enterprise grade management platform for our Grandstream access points, where you can remotely control your access points from anywhere around the world. And how does it work? Well, first you can join the beta test by creating an account at gwn.cloud slash register. This beta test is free and open to any users that uses our Grandstream GWN Wi-Fi access point. And Hakimi will help explain more about this, uh, its features later on. So simply, you just add the information of your network using the GWN application on the page or by scanning the 2D barcode containing the MAC address and password to the GWN Cloud app. It's really simple and there's no restrictions on the number of sites or Wi-Fi access points you can manage through this. And you can easily deploy professional uh, secured wired and wireless networks across one site or to thousands all from a single cloud-based dashboard. Your entire network management can be monitored in real time at a glance on our easy to read dashboard with rich reporting details and analytics to improve your operational efficiencies. Uh, centrally manage an entire infrastructure of unlimited amount of GWN APs across the network, regardless of the size of location without licensing or subscription fees. And you can change any policies and easily manage users' workflow 
through our GWN Cloud dashboard. So now let's go over some advantages of the GWN Cloud and what it could do for you. So if your organization is geographically dispersed, a uh, cloud-managed uh, wireless LAN lets you control your entire uh, wireless network from a single interface. It's great for hotels, uh, convention centers, dormitories, places that are uh, spacious. The GWN Cloud can provide flexibility where you don't have to manually go to each access point and configure them one at a time. You can easily modify and monitor um, any changes to your APs without having the hassle of managing everything individually. So this makes the GWN Cloud a powerful solution for integrators and or uh, managed service providers to create dynamic Wi-Fi networks that can be managed remotely. Our cloud-based controller allows you to have in one place the ability to configure, communicate, and enforce policies on your Grandstream APs. So another benefit is scalability. Because your controller can now be managed on the cloud, uh, you no longer have to be concerned with hardware appliance scalability limitations. With on-premises controller appliances, you can run into challenges like being given a maximum number of wireless access points for a single platform. So expansion beyond that uh, could either mean upgrading to a larger appliance or having to manage multiple controllers or new hardware would have to be purchased for rapidly expanding, expanding infrastructures. Whereas the GWN Cloud uh, theoretically has no limits. In the cloud, your wireless LAN can contain anywhere from a handful to thousands of APs without being restricted by hardware uh, limitations. And along those same lines as when new features come out, older controllers must be manually upgraded to handle advanced capabilities, which can take a lot of time and manpower to accomplish. So with, uh, with the cloud approach, uh, you have a single point of management, regardless of where your IT staff is physically located. And this eliminate, eliminates the need to deploy controllers at each site as everything is controlled on the cloud. Um, and another uh, benefit of cloud management is the fact that you can even do zero touch deployment. So this means that you can pre-configure your wireless network before it even shipped to the remote site. So the AP um, needs to only, um, the AP needs to only be connected to the network, uh, power it on and it will set itself up automatically if registered with the correct uh, serial number and MAC address. So this means that field technicians no longer have to travel to various branch offices to set up their wireless network. And you can also save time with our GWN Cloud. Your infrastructure staff doesn't have to spend their time and effort on updating and patching new equipment. So all they need to do is schedule an upgrade uh, when they want the updates to occur. And before, legacy management requires engineers to log into the network devices, normally one at a time, and use the command line interface to make whatever changes uh, necessary. So this will definitely change the role of your IT staff tremendously. Uh, this is absolutely an often overlooked benefit that can actually be a time and money saver in a long run. So for like a busy medical building, it's vital for employees to always have access to the internet. So if something happens, they need to immediately uh, give attention to um, and their IT staff needs to find a way to quickly resolve the problem. Okay, uh, now let's switch over to Hakimi who will give you a demo of the GWN Cloud interface.
Hello, hello. Okay, hold on. And let me share my screen. Let me share. Hi guys, uh, can you see my screen now? Right. So, uh, hi guys. My name is Hakimi. I am the technical support for Grand Stream. I was, uh, I think, it's still loading for Ugu Uganku, but I think the rest of you can see already. Then well, I'll just uh, start for now. So. Uh, Again, uh, my name is Hakimi. My, I'm the technical support for Grand Stream. I am based in Malaysia. So today, I would like to demo you guys our latest product, which is the GWN Cloud. So before we get started, there's a few things that needs to be done to our GWN 7610 or 7600. In order to prepare the APs, we first have to upgrade upgrade the AP to 1.6.2.3 which is not released as official yet but you can find the uh, the firmware in our forum so let's go ahead go to Grand Stream forums uh, this is our forum so uh, go ahead to beta club and to GWN cloud so under GWN Cloud Wi-Fi Network Management Platform, where you can see and find the necessary firmware for you to upgrade before it can be paired into GWN Cloud. So uh, you can upgrade the AP by logging into the AP itself and turn it into master and then up, uh, upgrade the firmware directly or you can upgrade through GWN another GWN uh, 7610 as the master or GW, as GWN 7000 router as the master so after upgrade make sure to factory reset it back because you, uh, the GWN APs needs to be in provisioning mode and not in, a, in slave or master mode before it can be paired into GWN cloud Uh, another thing that you need is, of course, the account in GWN Cloud itself. So to have an, to sign up for an account, just click sign up button here, enter your email, your login name, password, and then confirm password, your time, and then the capture, and then sign up. So after that, you will be given an account, and then you have to verify the account from your email. I've already configured. I have already uh, signed up for one account, so. Let me just sign in into my account. By the way, this is the GWN Cloud uh, URL. So to get to the GWN Cloud, just type in www.gwn.cloud and enter. So I'll just sign into my account now. Yep, so here is the uh, dashboard screen. You will, you will be greeted with the dashboard screen. So under the dash, dashboard screen, there will be all the uh, APs, clients, uh, alert logs, client counts, bandwidth usage, and so on and so forth. So if you're familiar with our product, then this will look, the interface will look just the same. We try to make our interface uh, consistent across all our products. So this will be the overview screen, and the next will be uh, the network list. This is where you can create all the different network uh, lists, such as uh, to differentiate between all your APs. So, so maybe uh, 10 APs for this network and 10, another 10 APs for another network. 
or how I would like to use it is by entering a company name. So for example, I will enter a company A here and then specify all the country, region, time zone and uh, anything else. And then I can also add another account, but yeah, it's not here yet. And what this clone network does is you are able to uh, clone this network again so you don't have to configure it by scratch. So if you want to duplicate a certain network, uh, just clone this network here. So uh, it saves time so you don't have to configure a new network by scratch. So I'm not planning to uh, clone this network. So I'm just press save here. So right now I have two com uh, two companies, uh, the default and company A. So next one is the AP list. This is where you can see all the APs here uh, paired into the GWN cloud. And I think uh, we have tested up to 1 million APs. So uh, it works fine. So I think uh, that will be more than enough. The next on the menu will be the network. So you can choose uh, the network that you have created uh, just now under the network list here. So it will appear under, the, under here. So just go ahead and select company A or the default or any other company that you want to manage under this network menu. For now, I'll just go and manage the default network because I'm, I don't want to use company A. Okay. So once you get to the network default overview screen, it will be just the same, but this will be only under this network. Whereas uh, as before, the dashboard screen will give uh, an overall uh, overall uh, status and overall uh, status for all of your APs paired into the GDPN cloud. But under ne the network here, it will be just uh, the APs that is under this default network. As you can see here, we can, uh, it's all just the same as uh, before. You have uh, top APs, top clients, and top SSIDs, and, and all. So the next one is the express point itself. The first menu will be uh, the summary. Uh, you can see the AP channel distributions and how many APs are online and offline. Second will be the status. Uh, you can see the model, the MAC address, the name, the IP address, uptime, the channel, the clients, and the actions that you can take. So let's go ahead and configure and add one APs to here. I'll just give my name. This APs can, uh, you can give any name to this AP. So let's say AP1. I'm going to add uh, AE, eight one two c The password will be uh, the same password that you can find under the G, the, uh, below the GW itself on a sticker. So this will be the Wi-Fi password as well as the management password. So just enter it here and press add. And, and then the AP will be paired to the GW cloud. It will take some time before it is paired. And uh, just make sure that the APs is under firmware 1.0.6.23 and it is under provisioning mode, which means the provisioning mode is, uh, you can see the GDPN itself is, bl is blinking in purple. So right now it's, uh, it's pairing right now. So we're just going to have to wait a few minutes, but uh, you can go ahead and configure the APs after after you have paired. So you can check. Uh, you, you can you can configure uh, the the mode, the channel width, and so on and so forth. Right, right before it is paired. IP type dynamic. If you want the IP to be dynamic, dynamic IP or DHCP. If you want it to be fixed IP, and just click here, and then just enter the IP address that you want you want to assign for this AP. I think it should be online right now. Yes, you can see here uh, the GDW is already paired. So it just took about maybe a few seconds. I can give a 
five seconds. Eh? Yeah, is it? <laughs> so uh, once it's paired, you can see all the firmwares, the name and the MAC address, and the model of that AP. Uh, under status here, you can see it's green. Uh, it's a blink point. There's nothing you can do there here. And then the summary of the APs. So it's up to date now. There's, there's only one AP pad and there's only one AP online here. So next will be the client. The first screen would be the summary. And then on this screen, you can see uh, the client's count and the bandwidth usage for each of the client. You can select uh, all SSIDs or just you can filter it by uh, the SSIDs that you want to analyze. And then you can see also for the last two hours, one day, one week, or one month. And on the status here, it's also the same thing. This, uh, there is one uh, AP connected to, yeah, to uh, uh, sorry, there's one uh, device is connected to this AP SSID now. It's my phone. So you can, from here, you can specify uh, the bandwidth rate and the bandwidth rules for this device. And the time band client uh, is coming soon. It's not available right now. I'm not sure when it will be available, but it should be coming soon. So under time policy list, this is where you can specify the uh, the timing for each of the device. Let's say you want to, uh, just to allow around thirty minutes for each device to connect, and then you you have to you want the device to log out and register back to your network. So this is where you can. Enable, just enable time policy and connection times, how many days, how many hours or minutes that you want. You can reset this daily. So if you select reset weekly, then the client would not be able to uh, log in back until the next week. And the access list will be, uh, if you want to ban certain client, then you can go ahead and blend under here. Next up is the SSIDs. This is where you can uh, see all the SSIDs uh, configured. So to configure SSID, just go under configuration here, and then select edit. Or before that, uh, here of course you have to create and add a new SSID under here. But by default, there is a GWN Cloud uh, SSID configured. So let's go ahead and click here. So the configuration configuration would just be the same as our GWN7610 or GWN7610. So under here, you can configure all the VLAN, dual band, 2.4 gigahertz, the security mode. This will be all the standard stuff. So if, one, if you want to enable captive portal, you can enable, enable it here and then select the captive portal policy, which we will uh, go take a look uh, after this. This will be the device membership. Uh, if you want, once you have created the SSID, you you will want to specify which AP will take this SSID. So you just select the APs on the left column and then press uh, right to bring it here. So so that this AP will now have this SSID. You can also schedule the SSID as well. So you can turn it off at certain time maybe during night time where nobody's using in your office and enable it uh, on, on, the, on during the day. So uh, yeah, you can use it uh, during work time. So uh, next one is the captive portal. Again, this is the summary. Uh, there's not, not much I want to elaborate here. And then this, we go to the policy list. So this is the captive portal policy. So you can give it a name. Authentication type, you can give it uh, a simple password, a social login authentication such as uh, WeChat, uh, Facebook, and all that. 
and also radius server. If you have a radius server, then you can use a radius server or no authentication at all. But you can uh, uh, redirect the the landing page to a to a splash page that you can have a password. Yeah, password here. So this page will have the password where you, you have to enter all the details and then before before you can use the internet. Uh, Pre-authentication rules means that before the uh, before the user can uh, browse the internet or before the browser the user enter any password, there's a select few uh, select few internet web page that you want to allow before you allow the user to browse before it they can register before they register such as your company's website so the for example i put grandstream.com so even before the user register itself uh, themselves uh, uh, sorry even before the user uh, enter the password uh, to go into the, to the internet, but before that, they can also they can already access www.grandstream.com. So uh, besides the host name, you can specify a subnet or IP address, or you can select a service, a web, TCP port, GDP port, protocol radio, or maybe the user can access. You can specify. Uh, you can limit the access to be only their uh, email, for example, and then the post. Authentication rule is after they have authenticated themselves. This is a splash page where you can uh, upload or download the splash page. The, the page for your captive portal. So uh, we, we have a default one, so you don't have to you can use ours, but of course, it's better to use yours. Whatever, uh, whatever page that you have, conf uh, that you have created, you can upload it here on this page. And this page will be the bandwidth rules. So you might want to to limit the bandwidth on this uh, on on this SSID. So anything. So you can specify any, uh, maybe for Mac upstream read or for Mac downstream read. You may want to configure this because you you won't know the client or the endpoint, the clients. Sometimes they have virus in their laptop or in their device. And then that virus will take up all the bandwidth that you have uh, available. So you might want to for each client, you might want to just limit them for only two meg. You don't want them to use up all the bandwidth because that can kill. Sometimes the, the, the user doesn't even know that they have this virus that take, takes up all the bandwidth. And that makes your overall network very, very slow. So uh, this bandwidth rule is only for the whole SSID. But if you want it to be a per client, and it, then you need to configure it uh, around here, somewhere here. Yeah. Next one is the system settings. This is all the uh, the usual will be all your time zone, the country, region, the password. Oh no, <laughs> I just uh, exposed my SSH password here. Not a good security. Uh, under maintenance, you can see the syslog. Uh, you can uh, specify syslog uh, server and syslog level. So typically, we want a debug level if you uh, encounter any certain issues. So just select to debug and send us the syslog file to us so we can analyze. And the alert, specify the email, enable the email uh, notification, and then specify the email address here. And then you can also just check which uh, which of this uh, alert that you want to be uh, to be uh, sent to your email. And then this is alert details that a lot locks if you can see uh, right here on the uh, GW cloud itself. And lastly, this uh, it, this is the page where you can upgrade the firmware. Just select 
the firmware. So under here is where you can upload the firmware. Once it, once you have uploaded the, the firmware, select the AP you want to upgrade and press upgrade. So I think uh, that's it. Oh, just one more thing. Under under user here, under my account, this is where you can see the account, uh, your account and your privilege. And you can add additional users for this AP, for this GWA Cloud account. So for example, this is my account, which is have the super administrator privilege. But you can add another one with a different email address, and then you can specify a different privilege for them. So if you want uh, that guy or that network administrator to just manage one network, then of course just select this network and then or a guest editor. So the guest editor will, would have less privilege than a network administrator. Well, yes, I think uh, that's it from me. I'll pass over to, or well, before, yeah, I'll pass over to Anita. Thank you. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask in the Q&A section. Thank you, Hakimi, for providing such an informative demo. Uh, like he said, uh, please type in any questions you have in the chat section. And if you need any additional uh, technical support after this or have any feedback, please visit gwn.cloudbetaform at um, forms.grandstream.com. And please also check out our beta club page and our GWN Cloud page. And for more information on Wi-Fi and networking, we have a lot of blog posts on a variety of topics on our page as well. They're really interesting and informative to read. And if you haven't yet, please sign up um, to become a certified Grandstream reseller on our Reseller Connect page. And being part of this awesome program, you will get priority tickets, updates on news, webinars, and training materials. And lastly, remember to connect with us and stay updated through our, our social media pages. In addition to our global accounts, we have regional social media pages as well. For APAC, please follow at APAC Grandstream on Facebook. We try to post a couple of times a week, and it's a great platform to follow because it shows, uh, you, it shows you what other people in other parts of the world are doing with Grandstream. And we also host quarterly giveaways. Um, you can share our content on our page and keep updated with all the upcoming and latest videos, blogs, news, and more. And also something really cool is that we're currently streaming on our uh, Facebook page right now. So let me show you guys really quick. As you can see here, um, my favorite part about this feature is that it automatically gets on top of your uh, friends and followers feed. So going back to our presentation. Um, I'll take this time to allow anyone to ask any questions. And yes, this presentation will be sent to everyone who registered. So keep a look lookout on that email. For additional support questions and comments, please email sales underscore Asia at grandstream.com or contact your distributor.
And I know that uh, people are going to be leaving soon. So thank you all for attending this webinar and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and see you at our next training.